Welcome to Celebrity Spotlight Radio with your host, Antonio Sayant. And earlier today, I had the pleasure of interviewing John Allen Simon and Elizabeth Carr, which were the team behind restoring this amazing film from 1980s entitled Out of the Blue. Director, Dennis Hopper. My advice, everyone should see this film. It's going to be playing on November 17th at the Metrograph in New York City. Go see this film. It's definitely a masterpiece. Yes. And I'm going to leave the uh, link to the trailer. So go view the trailer uh, in my description below. And go see this film on November 17, the Metrograph, New York City. How are you guys doing? All right. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Hi, Antonio. Thank you. How are you? Today, I'm going to be interviewing the people behind restoring this beautiful film, uh, Out of the Blue, John Allen Simon and Elizabeth Carr. Excellent, excellent film, by the way. I, I loved it. And you know what? I grew up in the 80s, so I never saw the film at all way back. You know, it might have been because the, the, I guess the film disappeared. Um, I don't know. I don't even remember it. I'm a fan of uh, Dennis Hopper. So anyway, in the memory of uh, late Dennis Hopper, who passed away back in 2010, the film Out of the Blue is about a young girl whose father is an ex-convict and whose mother is a junkie, uh, finds it's difficult to conform and tries to find comfort in a, in a quirky uh, combination of Elvis and the punk scene, starring Linda Manns, uh, Sharon uh, Farrell, Don Gordon, uh, Raymond Burr, uh, Eric Allen, Fiora uh, Brody, and Dennis Hopper, who also directed. When was the film first released and where? Well, the film was first released its premiere was at the Cannes Film Festival in 1980, but because of the circumstances of its making, Dennis Hopper had originally only been hired to act in it, and uh, the original writer-director, who'd been intending something, I think, a little less nihilistic and incendiary, uh, was fired a week into production, and Dennis took over and reworked the script and reworked elements and started from scratch, but in doing so, Dennis was an American and the movie was being made under uh, Canadian tax shelter laws of the 1980s, where investors could put up money and uh, write off a multiple of their investment. The government had done this to encourage production in Canada. And uh, so if someone, inv if a dentist invested $25,000, he could write off 125,000 or, or, or uh, 250,000 in some abusive cases. But it was better if the movie didn't make any money. And uh, of course, what happened when Dennis took over is the movie lost its Canadian certification. So after premiering at Cannes and having uh, some releases in Europe, uh, the movie fell into uh, kind of a cold war between the filmmakers and the financiers and, and the investors behind the financiers. And I had released a movie that had been shelved called The Wicker Man to a great success. I'd been a film critic in New Orleans and another critic and I, older guy, um, rescued The Wicker Man off the shelf and took it out with Christopher Lee. And as a result, uh, Time Magazine did an article on me as a guy kind of finding these lost movies. And uh, I was deluged with these lost, unloved films, and Out of the Blue was one of them. And uh, I fell in love with it, uh, got in touch with Dennis. He and I took it around the country, and we had great success in art houses, but we never got to places like Florida with it. We played the Coolidge Corner in Boston for 17 weeks, where it broke the house record. We played in uh, in Los Angeles at the Lemley Theaters, which is an art house chain still here, and a, a number of other cities and museums and archives and things. But the but the movie didn't get any kind of a huge 
release or attention. Got great reviews. It's one of Roger Ebert's favorite films. Jack Nicholson recorded the radio spot for us. And we did a uh, restoration in 2010, a film restoration in time for Dennis to attend the premiere of it in Paris uh, as part of a retrospective of his work. But the two prints that were struck uh, were starting to be get de degraded and torn and damaged. And I thought it was time to do a 4K digital restoration. And Elizabeth and I met and married and uh, became producing partners during that time period. And so we, we undertook it on our own. We couldn't get any foundation support for this work. And uh, Elizabeth spearheaded a Kickstarter. And we're hoping that uh, now, 40 years later, after having been made, and after having had this initial very limited theatrical release in the US, uh, Out of the Blue is gonna get more attention. And the I amazing you. fans who have supported it, including a lot of celebrities, uh, which Elizabeth can talk about. She brought uh, Natasha Leone and Chloe Seventy on board as presenters. We're hoping people will fall in love or hate. They'll have, an, they'll have a reaction. It's the kind of movie that you you don't you're not indifferent to. I'll say that. Well, it's definitely you know for me who who saw the film for the first time, um, I loved it. I actually connected because I remember uh, the '80s and growing up as a kid, you know, and uh, it was a difficult time, you know. And I grew up in a small town in New Jersey, so I could kind of relate to all that, you know, because you know your parents. Uh, they came from that hippie era, you know, so it was difficult. It was a difficult time. So uh, the ending, I didn't even guess the ending. And I'm not going to say because I don't want to give it away. It, it, it was a, it connected with the music out of the blue. Now, how did, now, if you can remember uh, the name of the title out of the blue, which fits the title, can you explain to the audience how you think they came up with this brilliant title? I know that the song is by Neil Young. I know exactly how they came up with it. Uh, the movie had originally been called CB under the helm of the writer, director, producer at the time, Leonard Ukir, who's yeah. still around and, and actually is very fond of the movie despite having been replaced as the director. Uh, Dennis was driving around the weekend that he was brought on to take over and given carte blanche to change anything. And he was very good friends with Neil Young and heard Out of the Blue on the radio. My, my, hey, hey, right. is actually, I guess what it's called, Out of the Blue and Into the Black. And contacted Neil and said, I wanna call my movie by your song title and use it. And Neil immediately gave him permission and it became kind of a centerpiece of it because the, the lyrics so pertain, pertain to it. The king, Elvis, is gone but not forgotten. This is the story of Johnny Rotten, punk. Mm -hmm. And uh, the original script, the character played by Linda Manns was into Elvis and devastated by his death. But uh, Dennis brought in the punk element. De Dennis was always attuned to what was happening in the culture. And with Easy Rider, his first film, he kind of defined the 60s. And out of the blue, I think very intentionally, was meant to be a commentary on Easy Rider, a kind of spiritual sequel about the collapse of 60s idealism into the hazy nihilism and cynicism of the 80s. Right. Now, Elizabeth, how the uh, how long did the process take? What was the, the film? Was it re-edited or changed at all from the original? Was okay. uh, no, it was... Uh... John worked closely with Vincent Perosi and the team at Roundabout Entertainment. And John was adamant that he didn't want any to change any of the frames. He can speak more directly to this, but there was one opportunity. There was one shot that had always sort of bugged him a little bit, but he thought, should I change it? And he said, no, this was, this was Dennis's movie. But so what we did was to bring out some of the elements that had been lost in the 35 millimeter prints and no longer visible to the human eye when watching it on a screen. 
so that you can now see things that if, even if you've seen this film several times, you hadn't seen before. And I do want to say, Antonio, that one of the reasons we did this restoration was for people like you who had yet to experience this film, because I think that, and it's, it's such an important film for people to see. And I'm not alone in that. One of the reviews after the AFI Fest was that if this film were coming out today, it would be hailed as a masterpiece and, and, and a best picture for 2020. So there's such an audience out there hungry for this film. They don't even know it yet, but right. it's, they will be. They're gonna connect with the film because I sure did. Wow. Yeah. And it, it was just totally amazing. And I, it, and let me tell you, like going back to Ted Koch's film, Wake and Fright, it was the same thing. Uh, I didn't want to see the film. I saw it in the big screen because I wanted to get the experience of it. You know, so I'm pretty sure that a lot of people on this film that Dennis Hoffman directed out of the blue is going to be fabulous. Now, has it played in, 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 uh, other festivals it did right it played it it premiered it premiered at the venice film festival which you can't get more prestigious than that as an official selection the restoration the original movie as i said i think had played a can it premiered at can and we were invited to have the u.s premiere at south by southwest another great festival that combines music and film and of course music plays such an important part in this movie and really all of dennis's movies uh, and of course it was canceled because of the pandemic. So we premiered, we, we got, we got the best of both worlds. We got the laurels from South by Southwest, but we actually were also able to have the actual premiere at the AFI film festival, American film Institute film festival. And it's played a number of, of other terrific film festivals like the Vancouver international film festival. And, uh, uh, you know several several others the bfi british film institute is going to release it in the uk and it's just played a terrific film festival in france and a great disc company called potemkin who had done the original disc release back in the back around 2000 when it first came out on disc is doing the the re-release of the disc in in france and is getting some theatrical play dates in Paris and right. elsewhere. Today is actually the uh, Parisian, the French premiere. So oh. Out of the Blue is playing in a number of cinemas and uh, some of the audience members uh, through Instagram and Twitter sent John and I some videos that they took when it played at the, uh, the Smells Like Teen Spirit Film Festival in Paris. And Antonio, it was amazing. The, the applause didn't stop, the hoots and hollers. And that audience was pretty much, for the most part, under 25. So that's our dream, to, to have a whole new generation experience Dennis Hopper's magnificent film. And for people like you who get it, who grew up in a small town, who know what that was like, who've never seen it. And the people who only have seen it on a gritty VHS copy from when John and Dennis did the original release. And by the way, just to go back to something John was telling you, remember when John rescued this film from the shelf back in the 80s, he and Dennis did guerrilla distribution before there was a thing. You know, studios held the keys, they decided what movies got seen, but John did something different. He went to the local cinemas, the art houses, he booked the movie in. In the case of Boston, Coolidge Corner, it played for John 17 weeks. I know, it gets more every time we tell okay. it, I think. Whatever, but, it would but, never but 17, it, so 17 is the number we're going with for but, now. It broke but, the house but, record there. But I mentioned that because that's kind of how Dennis did films. He didn't let anything stop him. You know, when he was told to do the last movie, it was unconventional. It, the studio ended up putting him in director jail. But when he got the chance to do Out of the Blue, hired as an actor, the director was fired. He rallied, lobbied to take over, he did. And I think as John has talked about from his conversations with Dennis, he saw something in Linda that wasn't happening on the week that was already being shot. 
but he just went for it. He didn't let anything stop him. And that's why I'm so glad this film is coming out. I'm so glad you connected with it. And yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, a lot of people connect and, and let's talk about Linda, Linda Mans, because um, it, it was when I, when I learned that she passed away, um, mind you, I didn't know that out of the blue was out there, you know, again and restored at, uh, until now. And um, was she involved in the amazing process in, in this whole experience? Well, Linda, Linda kind of retired from show business because right, right. she was she was such a unique personality. It would be be hard to imagine her being cast in a like an ordinary part. The right. movie really had to be tailored to her, which in many ways out of the blue was by Dennis when he took it over and by Harmony Kareen when he did Gummo, which is how Chloe Seveny first met Linda Manns. She had a bit part in David Fincher's uh, The Game, but you really, if you blinked, you, you kind of missed her. It, it was just doing something. So she had kind of uh, gone back to kind of a simple life. She married a cameraman who actually had worked on a movie that I had helped find, raise financing on The Howling Part Two. And uh, wow. she had three kids and she was an avid cook. Uh, but we went, we went out to see her in Palmdale right before the shutdown. And she was having a biopsy the next day, which actually uh, was ultimately, um, you know, not good news. And she, she died a few months later uh, in August of 2020. But the, she was so enthused about what we were doing and, it was it was really evident that with her husband having suffered a, a catastrophic stroke and one of her sons having died in a in a freak motorcycle accident uh, and her having kind of a, a gore, kind of severe agoraphobia, fear of going out places. She wanted to go. She wanted to go by South by Southwest. I said, well, we'll get plane tickets. She said, well, I can't fly. Oh, and I God. thought really? and I thought I thought. I said, well, maybe we can drive. She goes, well, as long as we don't go on highways. So I'm thinking, how are we going to fly during a pandemic? How are we going to drive from Los Angeles to Austin on back roads? You know, we're going to, we should bring a film crew. It'll probably be amazing. But she never changed. I mean, you know, she, her spirit, she was such a positive person to be with. She had this dark sense of humor. I did an interview with Sharon Farrell for Disc Extras for the U.S. release, which will be coming up in in early 2022. Severin Entertainment is putting it out in the U.S. who do a great job of, uh, of pulling together elements and things. And I've done over 25 interviews with people for the disc, and uh, including people who are fans of the movie and new Dennis personally, like the artist filmmaker Julian Schnabel and Ethan Hawke and Alex Cox, who did Straight to Hell with Dennis and had worked with Dennis as an assistant. Um, so amazing stories about Dennis. But in any case, Linda was so enthused about our doing the restoration and re-release, and she'd be so pleased that it's going to be on a big screen. She couldn't stop talking about how much fun she had with uh, with Dennis and working with him. And it, it was her favorite movie she made she made very clear to us of the handful of films she worked on and in her home in her den right off the kitchen where we'd sit with her having coffee she had a, a little shrine to out of the blue with the poster pictures of her and dennis from can uh, some other mementos and it was cb was the role that she felt the most connected to that she felt was the most resonated with who she was and she was absolutely lovely as john said she was excited about the restoration very moved that people were so taken with her performance and john had saved a box of the original posters from the early 80s release he and dennis hopper did and she signed them all for us which was one of the things that we sold to help raise money to fund the restoration yeah we used as a premium for the kickstarter that uh elizabeth uh 
and it's still available on the website. A few. Yeah, we. She didn't sign the whole box. I hasten to add. Oh, she but didn't sign the whole box. She signed about. She signed about fifty. So there's about fifty. 50 in total and um you know some of the people who who've worked with us have we we've, we've given them and yeah it's very meaningful if you're a fan of out of the blue it's very meaningful to have a poster signed by signed by linda and we're still we're still have a lot of bills left to pay from the restoration and re-release mm -hmm. uh and uh you know we, we think we'll we think we'll come out it was we didn't do it as a money maker we did it because I felt a debt of gratitude to Dennis, who really was a mentor and helped me understand the acting process. He thought I should direct. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm a writer and I like the editing room, but I don't know anything about actors, man. He said, I'll teach you what you need to know. And on the road he did. And he had me come visit him on various sets like Rumblefish. And, uh, and I got to, uh, I got to know him a little bit and uh he was just a great uh, teacher as well as a um, as well as a uh filmmaker and artist I think so it was kind of payback to do this well here's the question uh, uh you know that Martin Scorsese is the head of the uh, Cannes Classic in the Cannes Film Festival he's the head of it I I think that this film should be a classic I really I, I really do did you ever think about maybe, has he viewed the film at all? Do you know? Well, Martin Scorsese has seen every movie ever made. And I think I, I, I've been fortunate enough to have a few conversations with him over the years. And there, ever, I think one of the reasons, I mean, he's a great filmmaker and extraordinary talented, but I think one of his superpowers is I, I, I firmly believe he has something a photographic memory or something close to it because any movie I've ever mentioned to him not only does he remember who directed it and who was in it he'll talk about a shot a particular shot that he impressed him in the movie and who who can do that right you know any movie you mention talk about that tracking you know that that two shot in you know when the character is going from here to there he just remembers uh he remembers everything, but we did we did approach the film foundation, and they were unable to help with the restoration and re-release. And uh, Can the year we would have qualified for it, decided to do a screening of uh, Easy Rider instead, a re the restoration of Easy Rider. So we were lucky and fortunate that Venice, which had been a big supporter of Dennis. Uh, took the movie and we premiered as an official selection at Venice Classics. So yeah. that's where that precluded waiting another year, which I think we could have yeah. to, to be in Cannes, to be in Cannes, because there was there was tremendous support for it, but they, they didn't want to do two Dennis Hopper movies that year. I see. I see. But I think also you are you are correct in saying that Cannes, maybe they will change their position, the Cannes Classics and screen out of the blue at some future date again right now they there is such a rivalry between venice and Cannes. you cannot premiere at one or the other oh, wow. but i do like to say john and i like to say that out of the blue is the only film that has ever had a premiere at both Cannes and venice 1980 the original premiered at the Cannes film festival and 2019 uh our 4k restoration premiered in venice so oh, wow. so there you have it to a sold out screening and standing ovation i hasten to end chloe 70 by another fortunate circumstance happened to be filming uh her hbo series about 30 minutes away from venice so she was able to join us on the red carpet and and help present the movie with us at venice so that was that was really a lot nice and natasha leone is going to be joining us uh for the premiere at the Metrograph in New York City this coming Wednesday. So those thousands of your listeners in New York who 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 haven't gotten their tickets yet should should oh, uh, leap mean, forward. Because I'm telling everybody about this film. You know, so congratulations on it. You know, so after the, the Metrograph, where's it going? You think where it's 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 we think we'll end up playing in probably somewhere between 10 and 30 US cities. And it's 
going to be playing theaters in France and the UK and other territories and uh, and some theaters in Canada. And it's kind of a work in progress. It's just the two of us. I mean, it's kind of astonishing uh, that two people are doing what, you know, not only the restoration, but all the marketing materials and the uh, theatrical bookings and the disc extras and making all these deals. And uh, uh, the thing we have going for us is this movie is so beloved uh, that fans like Ethan Hawke and Julian Schnabel and uh, Chloe Sevigny and Natasha Leone, of course, are all, are, are, out there, all, are all out there helping us and getting the word out and uh, conveying their passion for the movie. And uh, look, you know, it sounds like you're a believer too. And we, we need all the help. We need all the help we can get. This is one of those movies that people who love movies should see. I mean, how Jack Nicholson says it in his radio spot. I've never endorsed anything, not even of my own. But if a masterpiece comes along, people should see it. And that's that's the spirit that drives the movie. Yes, it is a masterpiece. And I just want to congratulate both of you on the film. Well done. Well done. You you Thank took you. you took a film and you made it into a more of a masterpiece because you got it out there. And it's such a wonderful film. This is a a, a great gift to everyone, I think. And uh, everybody who was part of it. I just want to thank you and God bless. And I just wish you the best uh, for this film. And I'm going to be definitely spreading the news. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. And Celebrity Spotlight Radio. Thank you. Okay. Peace. Peace, Peace. Antonio. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.